to 50 people. So let's say, let's start. Um, so welcome everybody to this uh, second day of the HSF uh, workshop. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, just maybe a, a couple of reminders. Uh, first, uh, as you as you have seen, uh, the meeting has been recorded. Um, and second, uh, we have uh, some live notes uh, which are linked to the agenda and uh, please uh, um, write down if you have any questions, don't hesitate to write down uh, your questions or comments there. Uh, also favor, please favor uh, that Google Doc to the chat of Zoom because uh, like this we can keep track of, uh, of all the comments which were made. So let's start and uh, the first talk of today is uh, Josh with an introduction. So Josh, please go ahead. You have uh, 10 minutes including discussion. Okay. Uh, probably not too much discussion, but I'll, I'll get started. I cannot hear you, Josh. Huh? Ah. Can nobody can I hear can you? hear you. Uh, yes. yes, we can. Yeah, okay, Andrea, it's just you that <laughs> can't hear me. Okay, I'll, I'll start while Andrea perhaps tries to... No, okay, it's, it's, it's fine now. Okay, I don't know, maybe it was my problem. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, uh, welcome everybody. I just wanted to give a brief overview of um, to people who are not really familiar with the work of the of the generators um, working group in HSF, what we're all about, what we've been up to, and a, a very brief sort of um, background for for why this work's important. So um, to put sort of event generation into perspective in the the wider context of um, computing and software, um, especially at the LHC experiments. Um, as many people were probably aware, the event generation has already taken in in certain experiments for certain years of of, um, of producing simulated samples takes up to something like fifteen percent of the entire LHC um, of the entire experiment's computing share. So this is obviously not negligible. Um, and assuming that there's no development in the software, this fraction will increase quite a bit for Hydumi LHC. So for one thing there's been quite some concerted effort over a number of years to improve the simulation and reconstruction um, CPU efficiency. And so they're becoming faster. And then added to that, uh, it's expected that the precision and therefore the complexity um, and computing intensity of the calculations is going to increase. So even more usage of NLO merging, higher order electroweak corrections and things like moving to next to next leading order in QCD predictions. Um, but even today, there are issues with the available resources. So there are some analyses that have significant uncertainties um, coming through either the limited Monte Carlo statistics available and or the precision of the physics modeling that we have today. Um, and then if you look at the projections for high Lumia LHC, you can see, for instance, the figure on the, the right hand side here shows the Higgs coupling measurement projections. And in red, you see the theory uncertainties. So this is halving essentially the uncertainties that we have today. And you still see that they're still um, limiting a lot of the measurements. So this is important to get on top of as much as possible. So to very briefly give an overview of the activities of the working group, I mean, firstly, I can advertise that we have this um, paper that's been submitted to Computing and Software for Big Science, and that contains a lot of the current sort of state of the, of the focuses of the working group. Um, the, to, to very briefly go through them here, these include things like understanding better the current CPU costs, looking at moving to GPUs and vectorized code, uh, optimizing things like the internals of the generators, the face-based sam sampling and integration algorithms, um, reducing the costs associated with negative weight events, and promoting generally this work to get better training and funding and career opportunities for people. Um, and then there are a few sort of other important areas related to things like filtering strategies and inefficiencies in the experiments, um, uh, trying to understand the, the costs, for instance, of having full um, uh, matrix element and parcel shower and NLO predictions, etc. cetera. Um, and one thing we wanted to note briefly that this is sort of quite nicely overlapping with uh, the topics that were brought up in this first report of the LHCC review of highly LHC computing, not specific to generators, but um, more widely. And this is, this is all quite complementary to what uh, the aims of the working group. 
Um, so to go into a, a little bit more detail of some of the activities that, and, and starting off with some of the maybe shorter term activities. So things that we've been looking at are performance benchmarking of the, of the current generator code. So things like trying to compare the usage uh, and CPU costs between experiments, then also comparing um, as much as possible on equal footing different generators and seeing how they perform. And that's what's shown in the figure on the top right here. Um, so, for example, one thing that we, we understood by looking more closely at um, the Sherpa and Magra 5 um, AMC Enelo plus Pythia 8 W plus Jets productions at Enelo is that the different choice of scales used, um, which were chosen for physics reasons, but, um, it, it, you know, for, with some compromise on the Sherpa side and the physics, uh, you could improve the, the CPU by, well, reduce the CPU by a factor of two. Um, and so this is something that's now being taken into the experiments and then uh, the generator authors themselves, of course, are, are now starting to look very closely at the, their own code bases. Um, it's worth mentioning that there have been some important developments uh, actually a few years ago and then more recently in terms of efficiency savings. So weight based uncertainty is now ubiquitous and this is a, a really big deal and helps out a lot in terms of um, being able to reuse events. Um, and negative weight events uh, and uh, also weight spreads in general, so anything that dilutes the effective statistics of the Monte Carlo samples, still are causing significant issues, um, but there have been developments, one of which MCA and the low delta we'll hear about um, in very shortly, and then uh, also a couple of these uh, resampling uh, methods that have been proposed recently, and this as you can all see has, has happened this year. Um, then looking a bit further ahead to longer term view, I think it's clear that we we don't know exactly how the next um, generation of HPCs will look, but we know that they're going to be uh, more heterogeneous than we have now. Um, and there has already been quite a bit of work on looking to scale generator codes to HPC. So things like um, uh, Alpgen running at Argon and Sherpa running at, um, at, at NERSC with a group of people from Slack as well. Um, and this is, and the, for instance, this the Sherpa work um, on the right hand side, top right here, is showing that this W plus nine jet calculation with Sherpa at NERSC, which is quite impressive. But it, it's worth mentioning that this, although this is developing, it's not yet well integrated into the experiments. And so I know this is starting, but it's something that um, we want to, to keep an eye on too. And then looking more towards um, specifically a migration to, to GPUs and vectorized code, um, there's now starting to be quite a bit more impetus here and quite a bit of, um, of inertia building up. So there are things like um, uh, some work on Magra 5 AMC at NLO uh, with, the, including, with work being done by the authors of the, the generator, people at CERN and people at Argon, and we'll hear about that later today as well. Uh, and then there's also, you know, we're starting to see new techniques in terms of improving the most time consuming stages of the event generation. So, uh, and this is largely, this is in, involving using machine learning techniques. So things like improving the face-based sampling um, integration, PDF valuation efficiencies, uh, and the Vegas flow and PDF flow um, examples we'll also hear about today. Um, and something that I already mentioned, so we really want to try and promote collaboration in the area of generator software. So it's not always been easy to attract effort here. It's for instance, been hard to balance between what's done by um, experiments, what's done by the theorists and phenomenologists writing the code and what's done by software uh, experts. Um, but this is not unique to generators and been for instance, quite highly, uh, quite strongly highlighted in the European strategy update and, uh, and also at Snowmass, I think. Uh, one thing we want to mention briefly is that we're also looking to expand the interactions of the working group. So, so far we've focused mostly on the general purpose LHC experiments. This is where a lot of the, the high sort of really urgent issues seem to be, but we are keen to expand this more widely. So um, we know that there are significant challenges also for event generator software in areas like neutrino physics and nuclear physics and any others. Uh, so please get in touch with us if you're um, from these areas and you have anything that you'd like to discuss with the working group. 
Okay, so uh, then just to finish a bit of bookkeeping, Andrea already mentioned this a little bit. So we essentially have presentations today grouped into two main topics. One looking at efforts to reduce the effect of negative weights, um, uh, where we'll have a talk on MCA and a low delta and the uh, neural and positive resampling methods. And then the second half is developments to run softwares on GPU. So progress towards porting Magra 5A MC at NLO and looking at the PDF and Vegas flow um, tools that come out recently. And just in case uh, Andrea already mentioned it, but here is the link to the Google Doc um, for live notes where you're strongly encouraged to add your thoughts, questions and comments, etc. as we go through. And then there will also be um, some of us uh, chairing the session taking minutes. And that's all I had. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Josh. Are there any comments or questions to, to, to Josh? Uh, you can please raise your hand uh, on Zoom. But I don't see any. Ah, yes, uh, James, go ahead. Uh, hi, can you hear me OK? <clears throat> yeah, sure. So yeah, thanks for a very nice introduction, Josh. So I, I've asked this question before, actually, and um, it's not clear whether it makes any sense, but I, I've wondered occasionally if it would be possible to, rather than having lots of independent uh, event generators, many of which uh, at certain levels are replicating the same code, whether we could have some kind of common event generation framework where the common operations would be factored out and uh, could then be migrated to use uh, heterogeneous uh, software and then the individual generators would use this as some kind of interface into which they could plug their own um, novelties and, and specialities for, for various processes. Do you think this is something that might be achieved eventually, or do you think it's organizationally or even technically uh, not, not feasible? Um, I think it's a bit hard for me to answer because I think probably really the generator authors are the people that should answer. It, it seems to me like, I mean, for one thing, uh, there are lots of for, for integration, for instance, a lot of the under the hood work is done by Vegas algorithms or derivatives of the Vegas algorithm. So you could imagine a situation where, um, you know, a, a GPU optimized version of Vegas could be plugged in elsewhere. But I also know that the different generators do really tweak these in their own particular way. And, and it's not, you know, it's not pure Vegas used. It's some derivation that's been tailored to their particular use case and optimized for their particular way of, of, of running the generator. So whether or not this possible to make that more general and still work efficiently for everybody, I think I is beyond my capability to answer, but uh, maybe, I, I don't know. I think it would be quite challenging. Okay, thanks. Thanks, James. Are there other questions? I don't see any raised hands. Okay, uh, if not, thanks a lot, Josh. And uh, let's move on to Stefano.